are the uh, two lineups for this afternoon. You've heard Mick Cook saying that he's stuck with the team that won the semi final. Schlingerman, the goalkeeper, with that uh, Gaelic football experience from Mayo. And uh, then uh, there's the Michael Daly playing at right back, uh, scored the late equaliser in the quarter final. Alongside him, Alan McNally, a very experienced defender, the captain of the team, Derek Prendergast. And at left back, it's Shane Grimes, who scored in the third round against Longford. Got out with a 4 3 3 formation with uh, Alan Byrne and. Uh, he has vast experience too at the age of 30. David Cassidy, another quarter-final scorer in the replay. Paul O'Connor in the midfield. Ryan Brennan won the youngest of the Brennan dynasty. And Gavin Brennan, his elder brother, uh, wearing the number 11 shirt today. And then front, it's Fabio O'Brien. Damien Declan, uh, Fabio O'Brien is known. 14 league goals this season and two in the Cup. Second only to Rory Patterson in the league list. Goalkeeper for Sligo is Gary Rogers. Uh, at right back, the Galway man is Alan Keane and he's seen uh, plenty of action in the FAI Cup for Sligo Rovers Gavin Pearce takes the place at centre back alongside the young Englishman Jeff Henderson just 21 years of age and Irla Dameron is the left back uh, for some considerable time for Sligo Rovers into the midfield we go then Danny Ventry is the captain uh, next to him Joseph Mundo three titles, three different clubs in the League of Ireland Rock Kataro, the Tumber Curry Tornado as he's known, uh, Kieran Gilali and Aaron Green, the 23-year-old, completes the midfield. And in front for them, uh, the bulky figure of Anthony Elting, their top scorer in the League of Ireland this season with 12 goals. Scorer, two cup goals along the way to this. Able to get it away. O'Connor challenged by a doe. Chance of a quick break, but uh, Ryan Brennan has had to check, and Sligo have got their men back. And Brennan taking off Pierce. Good play. Good break this by Gohari United. Grimes overlapping here. Oh, the chance of the goal! Paul O'Connor puts Gohari United in front. Right on 13 minutes, Sligo ripped apart with a swift counter attack. And Paul O'Connor, who scored against Longford in the third round, scores in the final. And Gohari go in front. Classic underdog goal, under break. Good play intelligent play and a very very this is, this is the play here look at the overlap coming here timing of this pass is excellent first time into the box takes all the defenders out Paul O'Connor keeps his head great ball by Cassidy here the timing of the run but look at the finish here gets over the ball keeps it down this man Cassidy deserves some nice credit here great support a sweeping attack but fully deserved the finish that Paul O'Connor delivered. Ever present in the league this season. Jalali round Prendergast. Support was from Kataro. Important touch by Grimes, but it's with Kataro now. Ventry round the outside. Kataro's cross away by Prendergast. Out to Jalali once more. And Jalali. It's 1-1, but it's disallowed. Michelle O'Neill and the flag up. But I think the ball was over the goal line is what Michelle O'Neill is talking about. Interesting to see, is she correct? We'll see here. Hold of the ball was over the line, well done assistant. Great call, great call. We can see it here, she's absolutely inch perfect, but... Again, more frustration for Sligo Rovers, George. And then there to Gavin Brennan. Oh, what a goal! It won't count. It won't count. It's a foul by Brennan. It would have been a wonderful goal. It was a terrifically taken goal, but he uses his body again, George. I said in the first half the way he used his body. I feel he used it there as well. Watch him here when the ball comes in. He just into the. See the body there. Just the early contact, the referee, spot on. Well, that's uh, two ruled out. One for Sligo, one for Drogheda. Some, some would suggest Alan Keane should be stronger than this. But I have to give the referee the benefit there. Retaro coming off for Daniel North. So he's keeping the two strikers on. He probably put Diliari out on the right wing. Go 4-4-2. Daddy North uh, hails from Grimsby, where he started at Grimsby Town.
And that's out for another throw. That ball hit Danny Venter. The head of Pierce hit Danny Venter. Now Grimes gives away the corner. And the pressure all coming from Sligo now. Yes, it's uh, all hands on deck for draw to United because this is a, a seriously concerted effort by Sligo. And Rose corner, Elding missed the header. Oh, what a finish, it's Danny North. Well, there's a way to score your first FAI Cup goal. <laughs> Wonderful finish. And an inspired substitution. Yes, he gave full credit to the manager. But it was the touch by Anthony Elding that actually set it up. The movement by Elding is very, very clever. He gets a touch. And that man, Danny North, pulls away from in front of the goalkeeper. See him pulling away from in front of the goalkeeper. He's, the ball comes in, Elden's run, takes the counters away, slight cut, and there's, El, there's Daniel North pulled right away from the defenders. All his experience and then all his quality. The, lamming it, slamming it to the back of the net. Ah, that net fairly bulge, and now the big question, as Sligo's top scorer last season puts them level, has that first brought his balloon? That is the big question. The big free kick is in a very dangerous position. One field for Sligo to score now. That might be it. We don't know what throw you know, they've got left in them, but final substitution then for Sligo Rovers, having had to replace Jeff Henderson early in the second half, and then sending on uh, Danny North, uh, which led to their equaliser. Will he score with his first touch like North did? I think he'll take this, Gainer. I think it's a left for his ball. Although Joe Spindo wants something in Jalali, I think it's a left for his ball. Oh, it's in do. North! <laughs> I was wrong. What about that? Danny North. Two goals, seven minutes, and Sligo go in front. What a clever free kick. Joseph and Doe, little ball over the top. Draw to protest. But the goal stands. The, the protesting that the referee put the wall back and then didn't blow a whistle. The signal the free kick could be taken. That's what Thrawn are livid about. And they might just have a point. They might just have a point. He sent them off. He sent off Prendergast. Dramatic, George. Second yellow card in a space of just about a minute. It was his yellow card that led to the free kick when he fouled yeah. the fullback Alan Keane. And now another yellow card means uh, Prendergast is off and a yellow card for the scorer for taking his shirt off. He there's, didn't blow his whistle. Yes. There's, there's, it, does the referee blow his whistle? Watch him now. No, he doesn't. He's going to blow it. He doesn't blow his whistle. Well... Controversy after such a good game from the officials. Yes. If he's told them wait for the whistle and he hasn't blown it, he shouldn't allow the goal. Yes. How often do we see players booked when they take the free kick before the whistle is blown? It feels like the referee made a very serious mistake there. Quick thinking from Joseph and Dole. But it looks like Paul Tude has made a, a wrong. Schlingerman sending it over the head of everybody and Keane would be happy to let that run out of play. Well, Tony O'Donoghue on the touchline has information about the goal. Yeah. Well, George, I've been talking to some of the Drogheda players and they said they wouldn't have reacted like that but for the fact that they had asked the referee is this going to be quickly taken or do we have to wait for the whistle? And they're saying that he said clearly you have to wait for the whistle. So that's why they say they're so incensed. Well, it's certainly how it looked up here. Yes. yes. And uh, if that's the case, it's, a, it's very sad that this should be happening with here. It's Ryan Brennan, and it's 2-2. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The youngest of the Brennan clan throws the lifeline to his teammates. Oh. And how well he took it, George. How well he took this chance. Kept it down. Quality finish. At this stage of the game, so much pressure. Keep it down. Brilliantly taken.
gambling on the ball going through. What, what more can this game supply? Well, we're back on course for another extra time final in the Aviva. They've all been finals that have gone to extra time. 2010, 11, 12, and now it's 2 2, thanks to Ryan Brennan. And we could well be facing extra time once more. But we do, let us not forget, have another six minutes to go. <laughs> ten against ten. One sent off, one team with all its substitutes used up, and an injury. More drama here. Gilali. North. Elding. 3 2. What a finish! You ask what more could it give? It's given us that. One of the great FAI Cup final moments. Tears for Schlingerman, but there's just no answer to that. Quite brilliant. The touch by Danny North, the finish by this man, Elding. How much draw to feel? How, how do they, they don't deserve this draw? To, but look at this touch by Danny North. Wonderful touch, and this finish. Oh, magnificent call. Julali again, who's had a brilliant second half. There's the touch. Oh, super. We will never forget this day. And this just caps it all, and if that goal wins the cup, there has never been a better one. No, I would agree with that entirely. And I've seen many cup final winning goals, but none better than that, or as dramatic, George. Danny North, what a substitution he turned out to be. Never scored in the FAI Cup. Scores the equaliser, scores a lead goal, and then sets up what could be the winner. The League of Ireland's best at Ursula. Well, Gavin Brennan still playing football. Stigerman says, get it up the pitch. And they do that. And now it's Rusk. Peter Hines. And Rusk. And Cassidy and Danny Ventry puts it out, and it's got to be a corner. Danny Ventry got a pass right at last. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it for Drogheda United. The eight minutes are up. This will be the last throw of the dice for Mick Cook's team. Michal Slimmerman is up, and it's towards him, but somehow Sligo have cleared it. Paul Chief throws the whistle, and the cup goes to Sligo yet again. Yes. Danny North's introduction turning the game in Sligo Rovers' favour and now they've won the tournament for the third time in four years and there's only one other team that's done that the greatest of them all in the FAI Cup Shamrock Rovers yes, Sligo is. joined them three wins in four years brilliant, brilliant absolutely superb afternoon both teams deserve magnificent credit for giving us a game of this nature a few weeks ago they borrowed that they Pat Sterry game is the best cup final of all time. I think this would be the best cup final of all time. Oh, it was absolutely magnificent. Drogheda played their part. They took the lead. But sadly for them, they succumbed to that old cup final stat that the team that scores first tends not to win it. That hasn't yeah, happened since 2007. And sadly, Drogheda have experienced that too. And there's the dejection that tells that whole story. But the first Aviva final not to go to extra time will be remembered as long as the FAI Cup is talked about. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. And we almost had extra time at eight minutes injury time. And so much happened in that period of time. Um, that the man there, David Casty, was superb as well. And I've, I've got huge admiration for every player involved in this game throughout the afternoon. Danny North, the Ford man of the match, and his manager Ian Barraclough are down on the touchline with Tony O'Donoghue. Thanks very much indeed, George. And first to you, Danny, you didn't start the game, you end up man of the match. What an amazing day. It's what dreams are made of, you know, obviously. Gutted to be left out on the biggest game of the season. And I knew I'd get on at some point. And it's just, balls fell right to me. And the second one, I told Joey just to flick it. We've done it before in the league and scored. So I told him to do it and then it went in and then I just... See Elves out of the corner of my eye and thought, I can't touch him, finish, let's give him it. And thank God he put it away, you know. And you hadn't scored a goal in the FA Cup until today? Not this season, no. So I, it's, the FA Cup so that means a lot to me, like, because it was my first game back after my injury. 
away at Waterford. I got a few minutes. So it had played in my mind, could it be like the script has been written and that and proved it was. Well, you're, obviously your you're, uh, knowledge of Joseph and Doe and what he does with free kicks uh, came, came into mind. Yeah, like I say, it's worked. We did it against Limerick at home um, and we've not really done it since. And I just thought to myself, I've scored one, give me another, you know. Um, so I've just told Joe, he went up to him, had a little word, said, do it. And he has, and he couldn't put it any better for me. And I just had to concentrate on keeping it down. Had the referee said to the defence, though, you've got to wait for the whistle? Well, he's asked for the 10 yards, so usually if you ask for the 10 yards, you, you have to wait for the whistle, but... I'm not complaining. <laughs> oh, nah, excuse me. And nor is your manager, I'd say, Ian, congratulations. This Sligo Rovers uh, Aviva Stadium love affair goes on. The, the, you're right, the dream goes on. Um, you know, players like this fella here, made for the big occasion. And uh, he's waited, he was, he was gutted, he was not, not in the side. But when the chance comes along, he's put it away. And, and, and well, not only that, he's had a hand in all three goals. And that, that takes some doing, that takes some concentration, that takes some backing up of your players because there's a definite disappointment there. The players are out on the feet, they've worked so hard all season, I can't be any more proud of them. It was a big call by you though, what did he say to you when you told him he wasn't starting? You don't want to know. said a word to him. You don't want to know. I was talking with him. You don't want to know, but uh, listen, that's what the squad game is and that's what, the, I could only name 11. If I could have named all of them, you would do, obviously. And, and it's, it's, it's trying to make the right calls. I maybe have been lucky today, I don't know, but he was definitely going to have an impact because as the game was tiring, as the game was getting slower, he would have, uh, he's coming to his own. Now, you must feel a little bit sorry for Drought as well. This is their third cup final defeat. Yes, I do. Yeah, of course I do. Of course I do. It's a, I look at Mick there at the end and all I want to do is give him a hug because what do you say after that? It's, it's, a, uh, it's not a smash and grab, but, you know, his players have worked hard all, all game, all season, and... Um, the vendor empty handed. Well, you, you guys enjoy your evening. Congratulations, Cup champions once again. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Well, there was one man on the pitch who didn't appear to be having the happiest of afternoons, but he'd be the happiest man around now. That man is the captain of uh, Sligo Rovers, the scouser, Danny Ventry. And he is now going to be the man who won't make a mistake with this, because this is the presentation of the FAI Cup to Sligo Rovers. And good to see Gavin Pearce there on crutches. Yes, that's him there. Yeah. Arm, hand on the cup. Hopefully he's not doing himself more damage. I suppose the only thing in that favour is it was the last match of the season. <laughs> but uh, the pain will be forgotten. Yes, it is. And Danny eventually hoists the cup. Gary Stevens and Ian Barraclough, the winning management team. What a, what a day we've had in the Aviva. And uh, what an historic day it's been for Sligo Rovers. And does this mean Derry City get European football again, I think? So it, it, it's, a big, it's, a, it's a big day all around for several clubs. And a huge final we've experienced. An absolute joy, delight and privilege to have been at it. And uh, we have a victory. Elding the score of the winning goal. Hoists the cup at Sligo Rovers claim the trophy yet again. They beat Drawn United by three goals to two and we'll pass and assess it after this break. And the defensive pattern of Drawn United. Now the two teams, Ian Barakoff leading out Sligo Rovers and uh, Mick Cook leading out Drawn United who won the cup in 2005. This is their fourth final. Sligo Rovers make the trip to Dublin which has become so familiar over recent years and of course they're bidding this year to do something that only Shamrock Rovers have managed before them three cups in four seasons so if uh, Shamrock Rovers particularly in the 80s with the team to beat in the uh, FAI Cup well